Today, I'm going to be rehousing my Theraphosa Apophysis with a Pinkfoot Goliath bird ear. And I'm going to show you how I set up a bioactive enclosure for him with no drainage layer. So let's jump into it. Welcome to the Tarantula Collective. My name is Richard. If you like videos like this, please make sure you subscribe and hit the like button and leave a comment down below. And let me know if you keep any of your tarantulas in bioactive setups. Now, currently my Theraphosa Apophysis is in this six inch Tarantula Cribs cube. As you can see, the substrate is really high because she was small. And I wanted to make sure if she was touching the top, she could also touch the bottom and had plenty of ring to burrow. Shortly after we redid her enclosure so she had all this extra substrate, she molted and is now a lot bigger, almost twice the size. So we're gonna move her over into this large cuboid enclosure. This is also from Tarantula Cribs and I do have an affiliate code with them. It's TTC10. If you use that code, it will save you 10% and it will help support this channel because they'll send a small commission back to me. So I really appreciate it anytime y'all do that. Now I'm gonna set her over to the side while we get this set up. And for this substrate today, I'll be using the BioDudes Terra Arania. It's a substrate made specifically for arachnids. If you follow my channel, I pretty much use it in all of my enclosures these days. The last time I made a video about a bioactive enclosure for a Theraphosa species, I was using a different substrate that did require a drainage layer. The issue with drainage layers, especially with tarantulas or these specific tarantulas, is that they like to bury. And as soon as they hit that substrate barrier, that, that mesh that you have over the hydro balls, they don't stop. They'll dig that up, the substrate gets in there, the water gets mixed, it goes stagnant, it's a mess. So as beneficial as drainage layers are in bioactive setups, they don't work really well for burrowing species or even just opportunistic burrowers like Theraphosa or a lot of New World tarantulas. Really, any tarantula that lives in a burrow. New World or so I've got my big bag of Terra Arenia substrate here, and we're gonna fill this up just slightly below halfway. Now, I recently made a rehousing video similar to this, the same enclosure, but I put in a uh, golden red rum tarantula, the Brachypelma albiceps. That video wasn't from my channel. I got hired by Tarantula Cribs to produce some videos for their YouTube channel. So if you want to check that video out, I will link it at the end of this video. Right now, this substrate is dry, but I do have some sphagnum moss in this container. It's been soaking in water for a couple of days, so it's really saturated. And this is key to having a bioactive enclosure that doesn't have a drainage layer, because this will absorb the moisture, it will retain the moisture, and slowly release, because the therapy Apophysis, along with a lot of the Brazilian tarantulas, are from a tropical region. So they like that moisture in their substrate. And I gotta be careful saying humidity because if I say they like humidity, then people kind of obsess about that. They, they really fixate on the humidity and they get barometers and they're constantly checking the like humidity level of their enclosure and they want it to be high. So they start shutting off ventilation and, and really making the air stagnant to hit that like 70 or 80% humidity that they think is key to keeping this tray. It's, it's not. Don't worry about, don't, don't even use it. I don't even use our grommet. Not for tarantulas at least. So a lot of people in the hobby will refer to moisture levels instead of humidity. I'm gonna put on my gloves, uh, one, so my hands don't get muddy, but also to protect me from any urticating hairs we might be coming across later. Because this species definitely has some nasty hairs. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mix this wet sphagnum moss into the substrate. So we've got a good mix there. And now I'm gonna add a little bit of distilled water and get the rest of the substrate nice and wet. You don't want it swampy, not soggy. You don't wanna be able to like wring water out of it. You just want it to be kind of damp. So if you can pick it up and squeeze it and a bunch of water comes out, you, you've done too much. So now we got the substrate, it's damp, it's not oversaturated. I'm gonna press it down a little bit. <laughs> Not super hard, I don't want to like brick. Just want to compress it a little bit because it will settle over time. And then after that, I like to add a layer of dry substrate on top. This way the trench is not always on the moist substrate. They can burrow down and get to some of the moisture, but on top, it'll kind of be a little dry. Though a lot of the humidity or moisture will evaporate and kind of seep up through the substrate. So they'll, they'll get that moisture that they require. Next step is a hide. Now when picking a hide, I always go with cork bark because it's natural, it's mold resistant. I don't have to worry about, you know, just getting covered in mold. I mean, sometimes it might a little bit, but not like some of the other woods out there. If you're using a plastic hide or something like that, it's not something you gotta worry about. I got a couple of uh, half rounds here. We'll find one that kind of looks the best. I might even use both of them. And I'm just gonna place them kind of in the corner, burrow them down just a little bit. Then I'm gonna get a little bit more substrate and put it along the back to give this enclosure a little bit of a slope to it. I feel like that looks a lot more natural. And it also will kind of hold these hides into place. Right here is where I'm gonna put the plant. So we'll go ahead and, uh, oops. 
<laughs> just destroyed that eye. I go ahead and dig this out a little bit. And I got this beautiful plant here from the bio dude. In fact, pretty much everything I'm using there, the cork bark, the substrate, the, the plants, the leaves, I got it all from the bio dude. I really like their products. I'm an affiliate with them as well. So if you want to pick up any of these supplies, I'll have a link down below in the description. I have a discount code, which is tarantula12. It's going to save you 12% off anything that you need from the bio dude. And again, a small commission will come back to help support the channel. So by buying their products or your tarantulas, you're also helping out me if you uh, use that discount code. I like using plants with large leaves like this because as it will grow, they'll kind of go over the top. So I'll have the light coming in here. This will be bioactive. Plants will be living, but there'll also be a lot of shelter or shady places for the spider to hide. Then I think over in this corner, I want to put this little fern. Something else I like to do to kind of help maintain humidity, but also discourage the tarantula from digging behind their burrow and, and just kind of making a mess is I will add some of this live moss. What I like to do is I, I like to soak it in a bin for a couple of hours so that this moss is nice and saturated. And I'm gonna place that right on top of the hide and kind of push it in there. And then with just a little bit of moisture and a little bit of light, this is gonna kind of spring back to life and start growing. It just looks really beautiful. Another thing to consider while you're doing this is you don't want to block the ventilation hole. Yes, we want some moisture in the air, but we also want to give it plenty of airflow. I'm gonna put a little bit more moss in the back here. All right, I think that looks beautiful. Now I'm gonna add some of this leaf litter, biodegradable. The springtails are really gonna love it when it breaks down, just part of the entire ecosystem. One thing I forgot to mention is that I also put some bio shot in the sub shirt before I put it in here. I did that while I was setting up off camera. I just put it into like the big thing, a substrate. I don't forget, but I didn't show it on camera, but it's got a lot of microbes and nutrients and stuff like that. It's what really makes the substrate bioactive makes it like a living substrate. You definitely should get some of that bio shot to put in there. We've got some leaves. I like to kind of bunch them up a little bit so it looks natural. Put a little bit over the moss. I got some of this Exoterra Stone Desert. We got red and a ochre, which is kind of a yellowish one. I think I'm gonna go, we're gonna go with the yellow. Not a lot, but I do find that just adding a little bit of it kind of gives it a little bit of a natural look. I'll do a little bit red too. And we got the water dish. I talked about this in one of my last videos about the uh, lava tarantula. I get this from a restaurant wholesale store, like about 75 cents a piece, something like that. Good deal, works great, they're light, and I love them. So now we've got this little slice of the jungle here in this enclosure. The last thing I wanna add is some springtails to kind of help keep everything clean and, and break things down, get the cycle going. So I've got my container of springtails, pour a little bit of water in there, and then I can just pour the excess water right in here, and the springtails will go with it and kind of make themselves at home. Pour a little bit on the moss. They like living in there too. Whoop, man, a little bit of charcoal. Here's my little girl. You can see this is her, her old molt. She is beautiful. She's really skinny right now, but that's just because she recently molted. So I want to push these enclosures as close together as I can. And to rehouse her, I've got a catch cup. I've got paintbrush, tongs. And this is something I use a lot. It's just a little mini broom for like one of those hand dust bands. Just kicked hairs at me. I thought it was something a lot of people did, but one of the videos I made for tarantula cribs, I, or a couple of them, I was using this and their comments were like just shocked. They thought it was a really good idea. So I realized I don't think I've ever shown me actually using this on my channel. So that's all this is. And it's nice because if you're using one of these like 32 ounce deli cups, it almost perfectly covers it. So I'll put the, the lid here and I'll kind of use the broom to get the tarantula to go in the cup, and then I've got it closed it off so it can't escape. And then I'll move it into its new enclosure, take that away, get the paintbrush, and coax her right out. Easy peasy. It also will trap any urticating hair she kicks, but then you gotta be careful that you don't just kick them up in the air late. And there she is, her new home. Where are you going, little one? Get back over there, I want you to. <laughs> and then we'll put this on, and anytime you're using these tarantula cribs enclosure, just make sure those magnets lock, because I, I, you can't put it on upside down, and they don't lock, and it'll just kind of sit off cockeyed, and the trash can easily push that open. But with these rare earth, large magnets, like they will snap down hard. Always make sure the trash is not near the side because it can get its legs trapped in there and they'll freak out and rip their leg off. So make sure that there's nothing kind of, you don't want to pinch your fingers or the trash legs or anything. Lock that down, make sure it's good to go, and, and you're set. Now I'm going to put her on one of my shelves over here that has some LED lighting so the plants will get plenty of light. So this is my bioactive enclosure for a Theraphosa apophysis that does not require a drainage layer. Do you have any 
questions, just leave them down below in the comments. I will try to answer as many as I can, but if I can't answer them, I'm sure there'll be other people down there that can answer them for you as well. And if you like this video, please head over to the Tarantula Cribs YouTube channel and check out the videos I made for them there. They're short, sweet, right to the point. Don't forget to like the videos and subscribe to their channel. They're great people. They make great enclosures. They could definitely use your support. If you want to see the latest video I made for Tarantula Cribs, you can check that out right here. And if you want to see the video where I rehouse my lava spider, I'll put that right there. As always, I appreciate you watching. Subscribe if you want to see more. Thanks for buying Tarantula Collective merchandise, and I will see you next Tuesday. <laughs>